In this video, you will learn how to build a simple case management application. I'll use Appian's low-code development features so I can do it all in 10 minutes, including generating the data source. Along with this video, you'll find a tutorial that details each step so you can build it yourself. This application will manage IT requests for a company's IT department. Any employee will be able to submit a request, and members of the IT department will be able to see a list of these requests, view details about each, and take action. Let's get started. In Appian Designer, I'll first create a new application. I'll give it a name, technology management, and a description, application to manage IT department requests. Keep the checkbox marked to generate groups and folders to secure and organize objects. In Appian, role-based groups, like managers, are used to determine who can see and modify what is in your app. For this scenario, I'll keep the default application security and click Save. Once in my application, I can choose what to build first. I don't have any existing data, so I'll select New Record Type to start identifying the data structure for my app. In the dialog, I'll give it a name, TMIT Request, and a description, IT Request Submitted by Employees. Again, I'll keep the default security. In the record type, I'll click Tell us about your data. You can either connect to existing data or start from scratch. I'll select New Data Model. Next, I'll add new fields to store data about the IT requests. First, I'll remove some of the default fields I don't need. Then, I'll add new fields. For each IT request, I need to know the name and a description of the issue. I can add these from the suggested fields. There are a few other fields that I'll add by clicking New Field and choosing the data type. I want to capture who the contact for the case is, when they made the request, and the requested completion date. I also want to know the category of the issue and its status. Because these values should be a choice to business users, I'll configure the fields as choice lists. Under Choice List Fields, I can choose Status. A dialog opens where I can define what the status options are. I'll do Submitted, In Progress, and Done. For Category, I'll click New Choice List and use hardware and software as my values. Now, I can finish creating my data model and the database tables are generated. Notice that any fields that are user data types are automatically related to the user record type, which contains all of the user information in your environment. This relationship lets you easily access your user data, like someone's name or email. Next, I'll go through a few quick generation steps. First, under Views, I'll generate the summary view. This is how business users will see the details of an IT request. I'll click Generate Record View and keep Summary as the name. Next, I'll go to Actions. I'll click Generate Record Actions and keep Create, Update, and Delete selected. Actions are how users interact with the data to submit new IT requests, update them, and delete them. Before moving on, I'll update the record list which is a grid view of all the IT requests. Under List, I'll click Edit List. I'll reorder and rename a few columns, and that's it. After I click Save Changes, I'll preview the list. Notice that by default, I can search and filter by category and status. Now I'm done with the record type. My next step is to customize the interfaces that were generated with the summary view and record actions. I'll go to the Build view in Appian Designer, and I'll start with the form that business users will use to create and update IT requests. I'll select the TM Create or Update IT Request interface to open it. As you can see, it already contains the overall form structure, including the buttons and the fields for my record type. First, I'll reorganize the layout. In the left palette, you'll find the drag and drop components you can add to your interface. Under Layouts, I'll drag a card layout below the title Create IT Request. When you drag and drop components, the pink bolded outline indicates where they will be placed. Then, I'll move the columns layout that contains all of my fields inside of the card layout. The card layout will group the important required information and make the design more visually appealing. I'll move the requested completion date and description below the card layout. Finally, 
I'll reorder the fields in the card layout so they're in a more logical order. Before I'm done with the layout design, I want to add headings for each section. Inside the card layout, I need to add a side-by-side -side layout, a stamp, and a rich text field. I'll add another rich text field as a heading for the lower section. Now that I have my layout design, I'm ready to make changes to the components using the component configuration pane on the right. I'll start from the top with the card layout. I'll click it, then change the style to standard and the shape to rounded. For the stamp component, I'll update the width to only use as much space as necessary, change the icon to a laptop, and change the size to tiny. For the rich text field component, to add text, I'll click the plus icon, then header. In the component configuration pane, I'll update the text to what is the problem. For the heading in the lower section, I'll do the same and enter tell us more. Next, I'll make all the fields in the card layout required by selecting the required checkbox. While I'm doing this, I'll also update the placeholder text for the choice list selections, category and status, to add more details. In the lower section, for the description field, I'll click the convert icon to change it from a text field to a paragraph field so users have enough space to write their descriptions. I'll also add instruction text so users know what kind of information to include. Finally, I'll add a plus icon to the create button. It's time to save my changes, and I'm all done. Next, I'll go back to the build view to open the generated summary view, TM IT request summary. I'll just make a few quick changes to add a card layout, convert description to a paragraph field again, reorganize the fields, and save changes. That's it for my interfaces. Now, I'm ready to create a site so business users can complete their work. In the build view, I'll click New Site. I'll fill out the details, including a display name that users will see, and a web address identifier for the URL. Remember the record list I updated in the record type? This is what I'll add as a page so users can see all of the IT requests. I'll click Add Page, give it a title, change the type to Record List, and under Content, select my IT request record type. Before I'm done, I'll make a few updates to the site's style so it fits my organization's branding. I'll change the colors and make the buttons rounded. Business users will access the site from the navigation menu, so I'll find it in the list. The site opens to the record list, and it works on mobile devices without any extra work. In the top left, I'll click New IT Request. I'll fill out my form, which now matches my site branding, and submit it. The new IT request now appears in my record list. I'll add a few more requests, and you can see that I can search, filter, and sort them. Next, I'll click the issue name to go to the summary view. Here, I can see all of the data I just entered. I can also click Related Actions to update or delete the request. I'll update it and change the status to In Progress. You can see that my summary view is updated now. Finally. I'll test deleting the record. And that's it. In less than 10 minutes, I built a functional case management application from scratch. Now, it's your turn to follow the tutorial and build the app yourself. If you're interested in learning even more, try out our Appian Developer Learning Path, where you'll find everything you need to be successful building Appian applications.